Alright everybody, how's it going? My name is Jamie, and I can't play guitar. Welcome to the broadcast. It is, uh, it's breezy up in here because it's hot in my office, and we got a fan going, but welcome back. It's our daily hangout where we watch videos, we play guitar and or bass, and we have a good time, and if you're not doing one of those, well, what are you doing here? Uh, we're definitely watching videos, so we're going to go over some uh, news today. There's a few news videos that sparked my interest in my feed. We're going to watch those. They're very quick. They're probably about 10 minutes or less of news videos. And then we will get to some interesting other videos. And after that, we'll play some bass. I uh, hope you guys are having a good time today is the 19th of june 2023 again my name is jamie and i can't play guitar and this is our daily stream our good excuse to play guitar and or bass for at least a half an hour every day we're going to start this timer behind us to try and spend at least about two hours with y'all tonight and uh yeah thanks for dropping by hanging out and if you want to know any of the videos we're watching you can ask us in the comments or hit up the description after this video has gone live. Well, after after we're done, we'll update it with the videos we watched in the description. So thanks for being here. And uh, we got some pizza we're going to eat. So we're going to shut off the mic for just a minute while we watch some of these videos. Or at least we're going to shut up for a second while we eat pizza. We may not shut the mic off. Uh, first, we're going to watch a video about... Oh, what do we got here? Uh, rescuers searching for submersible that went missing uh, from CBS Evening News. Let's check it out. Good evening and thank you for joining us on this Juneteenth holiday. I'm Jerika Duncan in for Nora. We begin tonight with some breaking news in the desperate search for a small submersible that disappeared while taking a crew of five people to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean to view the Titanic shipwreck. The search area is located about 720 miles from Halifax, Nova Scotia, where the wreckage sits about 13,000 feet below the surface. Coast Guard officials say the 22-foot submersible carries enough oxygen for about four days. Now, among the five people on board, according to family members, is explorer and British billionaire Hamish Harding. The last communication from the vessel was Sunday morning. CBS's MTS tie-up leads us off tonight with the late-breaking developments. British billionaire and explorer. It's a race against time to find the submersible and those on board after it lost communication an hour and 45 minutes into its two and a half mile deep dive into the North Atlantic to see the haunting wreckage of the Titanic. The sub only carries around 96 hours worth of oxygen and its crew, which is understood to include British billionaire Hamish Harding, hasn't been heard from Hamish in Harding. a day now. The Fuck U.S. Yeah. Coast Guard is leading the multinational Good search. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a uh, remote area uh, and it is uh, a challenge to conduct a uh, search in that remote area. Dog, have you ever had PR training? You suck. Oceangate only started making deep sea expeditions with tourists in 2021. A CBS Sunday morning team Man. also made the journey to the ocean floor, which costs adventure. Fucking long standing track record of safety right there, 2021 till now. For tourists, $250,000. At one point, the crew realized something was wrong. Do you know where we are? 100 meters to the bow, then 470 to the bow. If you are lost, so are we. One of the passengers put it this way We were lost. We were lost for two and a half hours. The submersible is the first of its kind. CEO Stockton Rush told CBS Sunday morning safety was a priority. Their home to uh, everything else yeah, can fail. Right. Your thrusters can go, your lights can go, you're still going to be safe. Wait, the RMS so they were talking to people that had been on a previous expedition and they said that they got lost for two hours? Holy shit. 
Titanic began its maiden and final voyage from Britain to New York in 1912. It was the largest passenger ship on Earth at the time. After it struck an iceberg and sank, more than 1,500 like, people on board were killed. Still a big ship. Maritime experts are already warning conditions deep in the Atlantic are hard to predict, and any attempt at a rescue for those trapped will be extremely difficult. Mm. Now, there are several possible theories as to what could have happened, ranging from the sub lost <laughs> comms and has already floated to the surface, waiting to be discovered, to something more serious Seems may have like... happened and that it sunk to the bottom of the ocean floor, with rescuers warning that they don't have the oh, kind no. of specialized equipment the needed to reach those depths. Well, Tariqa. like, Very it, would, it seems Thank like you, there NTS was no time. thought put into this going wrong. In today's handoff to Joe, a fishing victory foiled by a shark. Okay. Fishing victory foiled by a shark bite. Oh, that was actually one we were going to watch. The next, This next one is that fishermen lose out on winning catch after it turns out a chunk of it was bitten off by a shark. Let's watch. <laughs> In today's handoff to Joe, a fishing victory foiled by a shark bite. Watch as a team reels in what they thought was the winning catch. With a lot of force to hoist that guy up. The crew of Sensation <laughs> erupted in cheers on Sunday as so they hoisted awkward. that blue marlin, <laughs> tipping the scales at a little over 619 pounds. This was all part of a tournament that was in Moorhead City, North Carolina. Well, hours later, that oh, joy some good old fishing into disappointment boys. when tournament They're officials all wearing found the same a chunk hat. Yeah, out baby. of the side of the fish, and they oh, determined no. it was bitten by a shark. What that meant was more than $3 million and prize money was now off the table. Uh, 2.7 yeah, million so for pissed. first place, Holy an additional 700,000 for the first catch of the year, over 500 pounds. Under the rules of the International Game Fish Association, a fish will be disqualified due to, quote, mutilation to the fish prior to landing or boating. The catch caused by sharks or other fish, mammals, or propellers wow, that remove or Reading's penetrate hard. the flesh. That's a lot of words. Is in top prize <laughs> went to the crew of sushi, which reeled in a 484-pound blue. He was thinking marlin. the same. He's like, I can't fucking read. Rules, I guess. I guess. What a bummer. I mean, how about the poor marlin? He survives a shark attack only to be. And they're so confused by the story. Yeah, you know, rough make week or something. Extra I don't money know. for that. I don't <laughs> get that rule. I really don't. That's like control. somebody cutting your lottery ticket, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Ripping well, it off. You can barely read. I don't so. get it. But okay, we don't make the rules. But I guess you got to play by them. Three million dollars they lost. At least maybe some of those crew members got their chance to take a picture with the fish and put it on their dating profile. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> again. In the, wow. In could you have a more of a local yeah, news response? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good Everyone night. Everyone involved in this. this is so, so I'm here cringy. today, guys, with a very important message. Leave Steph Curry alone. The man is already a living. All right. So this is called Steph Curry. I'm sorry. Steph Curry's wife continues to embarrass him by Jamari. Legends. He's arguably top 10 basketball players of all time, despite the yeah. fact that he has no clutch gene when it actually matters. Well, but on a serious <laughs> note, Steph Curry is someone really who came in and absolutely so. changed the way that the game is being he's played. Good, he's the reason that you have little eight year old kids chucking up 40 foot jump shots and they're actually going in. And overall, while he's yeah, been a superstar he was like the accuracy the NBA, dude, right? Like, he's always held himself stop, with a very high level threes. of pride, both on and off the court, never like being Steph involved Curry. in a single scandal, and basically just always being a good guy. Now, in this life, one of those things that you can't choose is your family, and his he parents like of all of people were actually friends. the very first to embarrass him. They had this very long like relationship. Vaguely. They birthed two NBA players. I feel like everyone had a pretty good image of them. That is until they got got this nasty divorce and the ex-wife ends up dating his best friend of like 40 years someone who they both Jesus knew extensively Christ, for a very long time and they kind of came out with all of that to the public while Curry they was making his last NBA pieces. championship run oh, no. and when it comes to the embarrassments of Steph Curry it really doesn't stop there I feel like when Steph first started going off and winning M I feel like this guy and Patrick Mahomes are very similar um Patrick Mahomes, I like less because we have I I 
I watch football and the Bills have to face Patrick Mahomes constantly, as you might know if you watch any kind of football. But Steph Curry, to me, less cringy. And uh, God damn, he's getting he's done dirty. But similar in a manner that that uh, Patrick Mahomes, I mean, his brother, Jesus Christ, what a monster. And then his wife is super cringy too. So uh, let's look, because this says Steph Curry's wife, and that was Steph Curry's parents. NBA championships. Everyone was loving both him and his family. Oh. He was bringing yeah, the baby to the press conference. His wife had her cooking show. <laughs> she was obviously a very passionate fan, calling the NBA finals rigged on Twitter. All because her husband couldn't hit a clutch shot. Steph, why are you passing the ball behind your back? But now at this point, she has embarrassed this man a couple of times, and I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about today. So despite this clip being over a year old, it actually recently went viral, where Aisha Curry went on uh, The View or The Real, you know, one of these daytime shows for women. The and chat. people are now calling this clip controversial. Aisha, I think it's time for a drink. What do you say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, we get to drink. Marcel? Marcel? So they bring out the uh, drink man, Marcel, shirtless, muscled up black man. Okay, they probably rub some oil on his body as well. And this is where the uh, controversy ensues. I see. She kind of feels uncomfortable. So that right there is why this clip is going viral. Okay, first off, you have the shot of the crowd. These women are getting juiced up. And then you got Ayesha. And she's saying, oh, you know, I'm taking off the ring for the night. I see this muscled up man. I'm not married. It's kind of the insinuation of what is going on. Oh, well. Marcel, Marcel. So they're all loving Marcel. Let's be real. I'm in. I don't know. So obviously she's messing around. She's trying to have a good time on this woman's talk show. She's trying funny. to be funny. Yeah. But a lot of people did find that move to be disrespectful. I mean, I do have to say, imagine Steph went on the like All The Smoke podcast, for example, and they were like, oh, it's, you know, time to bring out the drinks. It's time to bring out the cigars. Natasha, bring them out. And then some, you know, stripper looking girl comes out, big double D knockers. Steph's going like this with the ring. He's pretending to motorboat her or some shit. I just feel like the optics of that would not uh, end very well for that man. And I do feel like this type of behavior is embarrassing for him. And the other thing I wanted to say is I feel like that last clip got way blown out of proportion because of these comments that Aisha had made a couple years back after she went on the red table talk of all places with Satan herself. I'm telling you guys, do not go around this woman, okay? She's like the Madame Zeroni of this celebrity world. I summon you 10 years of bad luck. For you, Steph Curry, 12 years of cuckery. Something that really bothers me and, like, honestly has given me a sense of a little oh, bit shit. of an insecurity is the fact that, yeah, Who like, there are this, all these bro? women, like, throwing themselves. But me, like, the past 10 years, like, I don't have any of that. Like, I have zero. This sounds weird but like male attention uh, and so then like i begin to internalize it and i'm like is something wrong with you're me not, like you're not looking what you're not looking. Uh, you're not even, you're not but i'm gonna tell you something and you notice how they even tried to like save her everyone at the table's kind of thinking like where is this going and they're like oh that's where it's going let us try and save you, you don't want that male attention do you and she's like, <laughs> maybe. Did you see Marcel? Because when these comments were made, the internet was going absolutely Yo. bonkers. Yeah, and weird. people were basically saying, you're with this guy, okay? He's an NBA legend. Tall, handsome guy. He's rich. He's giving you a family. He's probably Seems pretty much giving you everything you could ever want. Seems and you're still nice. out here sad because there's not males giving you attention on a daily basis. I'm pretty sure after this, she even posed nude in some sort of magazine. And I really think that every Ever since this moment, people have definitely just looked at her different. Because I, I dealt with that for years, too. Like, and I was young. Like you. Yeah, I'm like, like oh, my God. Fair. I mean. Because I don't what? want it. But yeah. it would be nice to know that, like, someone's looking. Oh. But when oh. you're really dangerous. Off, turned off. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're that can beautiful. get real dangerous. Don't ever think for one minute Perfect. that it ain't no some men out there looking at you like I wish. Right. 
Honestly. And, and I'm going to tell you who knows that more than anybody. And on <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Jay is just so yeah, insufferable. She's super, I mean, super seriously, cringy, Ayesha, you should you want to feel good about yourself? Go walk down the street in some tight clothing. Go walk by some construction sites, and I promise you, at some point, you will get some male <laughs> attention. And so, while I do think people are kind of blowing that last clip out of proportion, I do kind of get why people have that reaction when she said things like this in the past. And so, it just does kind of go Ugh. to show that once you've made some sort of quote and embarrassed your partner or embarrassed yourself or, you know, had some sort of controversy, you really do have to watch the way you're going to move going forward because it can always come back around and rear its ugly head. I don't know if it's Damn. some sort of light skin curse that you're just going to be, you oh, know, Jesus. one of the best of all time on the field, like oh, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes and Steph Curry. But then off the field, you know, you're not going to even be involved in controversy, but it's actually going to be your family who's constantly Jesus, fucking your shit up. Look Either way, I want to know what you guys think about yeah, this down below. Guard. Do you think it's a big overreaction by the general public, or do you think there's more going on behind the scenes? Do you think that there's a Sneeko chair in Curry's house? Either way, I do want to thank you guys <laughs> no, for watching today's video, he said dropping it. a like and subscribing. But as you guys okay. know, it's been your boy, the Tan Superman, and some other super freaks like a Yeesh out here need to be covered. So I'm out. Huge bagel drama Peace. happening on TikTok. Hey everybody, Nick this is, is uh, my first try at doing something new on another channel for people who still want to learn about like the funny things I find online, but it's too small of an idea for me to make a whole second channel video on. So I have come to the He Said Us channel, which has been my garbage can channel for years, and I'm going to just... When I have like smaller ideas that won't work as a main video, I'll throw them on here and we can chat about them, even if it just takes a couple seconds. So, you know, let's jump into it. Today, we're going to be looking at this sandwich drama that is very niche and very short, but I think it's interesting. Um, there's a guy on TikTok who is really good at GeoGuessr stuff. You've probably seen him before. I'll put a clip of one of his TikToks right here. I eat a prime rib early. I just defeat me. But he has recently posted a TikTok where he found this specific sandwich shop that this guy made a TikTok about. And he was kind of, let me just, let me show you real quick. This is the greatest sandwich I've ever had. And I'm not telling you niggas where it's from. I will. So that that's the first one. It's just like a funny little TikTok where this guy's like, I just had the best sandwich I've ever had. I'm not going to tell you guys I want to gatekeep it because I want it for myself. I think the tweet's obviously a joke. Like, it's not meant to be, like, mean or, or bad-spirited. Um, but it's a good template for GeoGuessr guy to suddenly show up. And um, this is this is what he did. From? I will. It's an egg, cheese, and avocado bagel from Bagel Market on 168 William Street in New York City. You walked approximately 300 feet north and ate it at this table. So that's the TikTok. It's very impressive. Uh, I, I thought it was funny when I first saw it. I, I literally bookmarked it because I was like, Doug, this is, this is cool. This is interesting. But that's not where the story ended. This guy oh, no. says at the top of his tweet, if you, if you recognized, um, 168 William Street, New York City, you can order it by asking for the rain bolt. Do not gatekeep. And then someone said under the tweet, why the fuck would you be able to order it by asking for the rain bolt? And he said, because I got the bagel shop to name the bagel after me. So if he ever wants his bagel again, he'll have to order it in shame. Rain bolt is the name of the GeoGuessr guy who's on TikTok. So basically he talked to the sandwich shop over the internet, I presume, after making this video and uh, got them to put a, a menu item on their menu named after the guy no who figured way. out who this uh, sandwich was I feel from. so convoluted. And although it's a cool TikTok, the result was way worse than I thought. People were being, like, mean to the guy who originally 
uh, had like the sandwich there for gatekeeping and the fact that he said do not gatekeep in the tweet made people you know I think take it more seriously than they need to because when people are like gatekeeping stuff even if it's a joke people are gonna get upset I guess and so this guy ends up putting out another TikTok the guy who ate the sandwich in the first place um basically let me find it real quick okay so the original sandwich guy then makes a TikTok let's watch so I posted that video on my Instagram right and it blew up but in the comments they decided to spam tag the geo guesser now I don't know if y'all know who this is this is the geo guesser for some strange reason this dude can just find every place on the earth bro I, I don't get it so he DMs me and tries to guess where I got the bagel from and guess what and he was wrong he was wrong Y'all let never know where I got the bagel from. Blood on Twitter losing his mind. He got 40 hours on Google Maps tweeting about it, asking the whole world. Bro even sent somebody to a bagel place he thought it was to recreate the sandwich. Dude, do you think I'm about to tell you? If I'm actively gatekeeping a bagel, do you think I'm about to tell you where it's from? I am not going to let my bagel place end up on a top five places to eat in New York City. No, you guys are not going to milk the bagel place dry, bro. So, obviously, I still see this as, like, he's sort of being funny about it. As you can see, the comments are turned off, though. So, he was in contact with the sandwich guy, and he was still trying to guess the place. I guess it's not as easy as the 10 second TikTok. It takes him dozens of hours to figure out where this one fucking bagel place is. And people were not nice to this guy about not like giving it up or whatever. They got like way too serious about it. Kind of like ruining the whole point of the game, um, which caused him to post another TikTok that I'm going to show you right here. Where it's from, I will. It's the bagel drama the goes Yo, so deep, bro. Why are you riding my dick? <laughs> Go get a job at the CIA, bro. You rather look, you search the internet for, I'm never going there again. You just ruined it, bro. I will never show my face in the bagel place again. You might have got where I ate it at correctly. You might have got the restaurant correctly, but your ingredients are wrong. You'll still never be able to taste a sandwich. So, haha, jokes on you. Get a job. So he's sort of playing along. It seems like at this point, people at least thought he was being a little bit serious. It seems like there's a little bit of like annoyance there that all of that time and effort went into finding the sandwich, but still not a big deal. And then he posts this TikTok. Yo, this is the last time I'm going to talk about this bagel thing ever on the internet. A lot of y'all probably recognize me from this video where I said I had the greatest sandwich of my life and I wasn't going to tell y'all where it's from. First thing I want to say is it was clearly a joke. Like, go look at the original video comments, go look at the caption of the video, and tell me it wasn't a joke. Secondly, there's plenty of videos just like the one I made. Gatekeeping is something that's funny to me, so I made a joke about not telling y'all where I got a sandwich from. Thirdly, and in all actuality, if I don't want to tell you any information, I don't have to. Because I don't owe none of y'all nothing. Also, I knew he was going to find the bagel place. We were having a conversation throughout the process, bro. I'm not mad he found it. I knew he was going to find it. This video was also a joke. So I made a joke about not telling y'all where I got a bagel from, and that was met with homophobia, racism, death threats, and just flat out bullying, which does not justify any of that. Like I said, I knew he was gonna find a place because we've been talking about it. But what I didn't know, and what I have a problem with, is that he tried to take my sandwich and put it on the menu under his name. To be having a conversation throughout the process and then to throw that in and not speak to me about it because one, I could have gave you the correct ingredients. I don't care that much. Like this is very weird to me. Like this is very weird. He also had the restaurant look through all of their orders 300 plus orders to try to figure out what I got on my sandwich, bro. Then to, like, try to put it under his name. Like, did I know somebody was going to spend 80 plus hours to try to find where I got a sandwich from? Did I know the video was going to blow up? Did I know any of this was going to happen? No. So y'all can stop saying, oh, he wants to be famous for da-da-da-da. Oh, my it was fucking God. Just a joke, 
dude. I already know the rainbow dude is not gonna make a video talking about this. This is my worst this. nightmare. He's not gonna say anything about it. He's just gonna let just this racism, like a video of my son laughing, and then and someone just death threats just continue. Does this? But I this. went to the restaurant yesterday. I gave them the correct ingredients. I think they're gonna put it on the menu as a, a sandwich or something, so y'all can actually try the correct sandwich, bro. Like it was not that deep to me. What's deep to me is somebody trying to steal my whole, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I don't like. And also the harassment and bullying. This whole thing has been blown out of proportion, bro. And I said I wasn't gonna go back to the bagel place because it feels unsafe. But that's it, bro. Can y'all leave me alone now? Oh Jesus God. Christ. So obviously I the tone the has point. shifted a little bit in this whole thing. Um, while he's saying it's not that deep, there's also a ton of commenters coming in and saying, well, it does seem, like, that deep for you. This is just, like, sort of what this guy does. That's, like, his shtick, you know? That's how he makes entertainment. Um, and I see both sides of it. You know, on one side of it, this guy did just post a random TikTok and ended up getting harassed over kind of just being, like, an ass as a joke in the video and being, yep. like, I'm going to gatekeep it. Um, and then, you know, the, the search for it got way bigger and I can see how it's weird that, like, if he was in contact with the GeoGuessr guy, I can see how it's weird for suddenly there to be, like, this menu item at his bagel place, and it's the thing he gets, but it's under this other guy's name. Yeah. On the other hand, it's like, the GeoGuessr guy is the one who popularized it. You didn't really do anything but eat a sandwich, and it's a sandwich that the restaurant made, so it's like... I, if I were you, I wouldn't really publicly, you know, take that stance over it. But I can see how, like, after weeks of just people being, like, a jerk to you online, even if it is sort of a joke, it just becomes, like, blown out of proportion. And regular people who aren't online aren't equipped to handle stuff like this. And so, yeah, that's kind of it. I thought it was interesting how these things kind of blow up and how people get so angry over stuff like this. Um, people on both sides are thinking that everything is being taken too seriously um i can understand why it would be bad for this guy because like it has become so big that he might be recognized at this bagel shop um especially because everyone's going to it to get the thing that he told them they weren't going to be able to get um and then i also get why he would be annoyed that he wasn't able to like actually correct the ingredients and get it exactly right um I I think it got <laughs> way too serious too fast, and um, people probably have already forgotten about all of it. So uh, the internet moves that fast, but um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Uh, I thought the sandwich drama was interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, uh, you know, it's not serious enough to take a hard stance on it, but I do think the whole thing, I don't know, it's a very internet thing to happen, you know, like something really dumb, like a sandwich getting tracked down in New York City suddenly turns into a fucking, like, campaign to, to hunt down this sandwich, and that's really fun, but uh, people should probably calm down and leave this guy alone. Yep. And also, uh, you... All right. Next one is... Uh... T-U-N-D, the insane world of mega rich pastors. I'm actually going to switch over to guitar and just do some quiet like guitar exercises while we watch this. This is about half an hour, so this will be long enough for me to do a few different things. Uh, let's sit back and enjoy. Fire! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That chain cost me about 40000 Young man, Ooh. get up here quick. Young man, get up here quick, come on. Young man, get up here quick. You, up, up, quick, 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 quick. Right here. Fire on ya. Fire on ya. Rise up. Yes. Go on. Jesus Christ, man. My house is almost 25,000 square feet. Yeah. You can get lost in it. I had to get some speaking in it so I can find my wife. But you just saw Pomo G cash out on a $40,000 chain. There's this gospel that I like to call the gospel of bling bling. I think I'm going to 
think Jesus Christ would have rolled around in a Rolls Royce? Uh, I think he would have. Jesus was physically on the earth today. He wouldn't be riding a donkey. Wealth, prosperity. Right. This is the gospel in which the rappers and the preachers aren't that much different, right? Just how Polo G, a rapper, is cashing out on this hundred and fifteen thousand dollar chain. Yeah, it costing me about like one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Just as the rappers are cashing out on their iced out diamond chain, so are the preachers. Where if you step into their world of bling, you are can it cope them, baby? Seats of their Rolls Royces, their deposits of elegant multi million dollar jets, Lizard the people. gift and status Birkin bags to their members of their church, and of course, their Gucci Italian shoes. And this is not talking of the fake miracles, of course. All right, so he's talking about uh, mega rich pastors, like mega like televangelists, uh, but there's a, there's a few pastors where I've done wedding videos and photos in my town, and this probably is common across the U.S. in general, where, especially Catholic churches, um, the the priest will show up in, like, a very new Audi or BMW, and not a cheap one, like, mid-tier Audi BMW, $80,000 car, within three years old, and then the, the pastor, or I guess it's the priest at one of the last weddings that I did video at, uh, had like brand new Yeezys on and he got changed into like leather like Gucci loafers to do the ceremony so awesome right and then like when he pulled up he, in his uh in his Audi that's probably like an $80,000 car um he had like tons of gold chains on and stuff so uh definitely giving himself to the Lord just like these guys <laughs> never seen a pastor resurrect a man well today is your lucky day <laughs> That being said, let's first begin this video with this. My first house cost fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. I'm giving you a chance to write your check. How's it going? Fourteen thousand seven. My second house cost eighty-one thousand nine hundred dollars, and this watch cost more than that. Pastors flexing. Before we get into these pastors flexing, I receive many comments asking me where I get my music from. I use Epidemic Sounds, and their music selection is amazing. Right? Every sound, every music you've heard from this channel is all from Epidemic Sounds. And on there, you can use my referral link right in the description. You can use the site, fill the site out. And if you ain't filling the site, you know, you can cancel 30 days. You got 30 days all for free, right? They have over 40,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects. Sorry, we're going to let this ad play real quick. Any lawyers running after you to sue the out of you because all the rights to the music are all included but that being said sing my editor treat us with some music what you're seeing on the screen is a private jet it's sleek right it's not a celebrity's nor is it the president's this is the private jet of a pastor the private jet of a mega church pastor that goes by the name of Kenneth Copeland. how are you sir we'd just like to ask you about why you don't want to fly commercial why have you said that you won't fly commercial you said that it's like getting into a Two with a bunch of demons. You see there, them preachers spending all that money just to get this fat cat riding around. No, we're not. We're in business to do. Listen, I could scratch my flying itch with my little single engine open cockpit airplane. You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We Christ, wrestle not dude. with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. When I begin to think in the world of why a pastor might need a private jet, I couldn't even begin to think of an answer. Is this jet really to go and preach the word of God like Kenneth Copeland says? Or is this jet truly another manifestation of his extravagant purchases? And just like this jet, Kenneth Copeland stands as one of the wealthiest pastors in the US. He boasts a valuable one network of the wealthiest of people of $60 million. His wife also preaches. And while many of their congregation may reside in average apartments or live in modest condos, Kenneth and his wife 
live in this enormous parcel of land right inside their $7 million mansion home. Alongside its own tennis court, its multiple garages, and even their very own boat docks. And of course, right, those are all accompanied by their own jumbo jet parked beside their own exclusive airstrip. How did a pastor amass this amount of wealth, right? Where does all this wealth come from? When Kenneth would explain why he needed this level of extravagant purchases, he would respond. Get in the long tube with a bunch of demons. And right in that clip was Kenneth with his preacher friend, Jesse Duplantis, as they defended their luxury purchases of houses, yeah. mansions, and Freaking cars. Morons, is dude. this something that's moral? His preacher friend, Jesse Duplantis, is also another televangelist. And even his wealth is beyond our measures. One of my chandeliers costs more than most people's house. I got 22 chandeliers. Why would you house. fucking talk about mansion, that? Like, zooms what around in fancy cars. And he owns three private jets. And just like, you know, Creflo Dollar, the preacher of which we'll talk about in just a little bit, where he said commercial airlines don't match his VIP status. In order for me to do what I've been called to do, the airlines, they don't fly my schedule. Jesse's collections of luxurious items alone would make James Bond jealous. Got an intercontinental plane! Here he is, accompanied Why? by his wife, yeah, as they gracefully totally exit it. their 2019 Chrysler, entering into their Falcon 7X jet that's valued at, guess what, $54 million. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. Once again, is this something that's morally He wouldn't, no. Oh at God, a book signing event, an inside edition interviewer would question Jesse about his lavish belongings. But in a blink of an eye, this interviewer would be escorted out by Jesse. SC's security team. Why do you need a $54 million private jet? We're not doing any kind of interviews right now. I'm in a book. I just like to know why you need a pri Keep your hands off me. Why are your people touching me like this? Yeah, Could really. Let go of me. Add some ice that lady seems so right? insufferable, in but I totally church, agree with her. Go on to joke about this. Why? Are you Stop God. joking me. Oh, I can hear her holler. <laughs> <laughs> Insufferable like said, meets said, the worst person you've do. ever met. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland Ministries, if you were holy to begin shit. To think of why a pastor might need jets, big houses, and luxury cars, right? What could the reasons be? Is it greed? Could greed be the reason why Mr. Jesse Duplantis has bragged about his 22 chandeliers? My chandeliers cost more than most people's house. I got 22 chandeliers yeah, in my house. What the fuck, dude? All right. Anyway, that is, uh. All right, we're going to take a quick break, about a 15, and we'll be back in eh, between half an hour to an hour. We're going to be back for part two. Um, we got to attend to a few things didn't foresee coming up so we will be back within about an hour but thanks for hanging out with us so far uh we'll be watching some more videos playing guitar and bass and having a good time when we come back hopefully you had a good start to your week my name is jamie i can play guitar if you like the broadcast, just subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified every time we go live and you can hang out with us and watch some videos, play guitar, and have a good time. We'll see you next time.